very important that whilst you do massive mega projects, you know, international zone here and there and everything else, that the people people you affect also benefit from it. Now, of course, some of them had to be moved, kicking and screaming from their original homes. But I think once they see that this is actually an improvement, and uh, then they they will be they will be better off there. Uh, but you know, it takes time, so it, you have to manage this. And I'm not to say it's successful, uh, but it's certainly going to progress. Uh, but for me, it's an eye opener. But having said that, as I say, I've been visiting slums in Mumbai and the areas in Manila. You know, you think our slums here are better. You go to Ma areas in Manila, the slums there are three stories high. Mm -hmm. So it talks about density and 70 million people in a in a country that's just slightly larger than ours. Um, so again, um, social in social impact important because at the end of the day, you can talk about the kingdom come about how we want to increase the. GDP, you know, double in population and all that kind of stuff. But if the people that you're affecting don't benefit, then really it's not worthwhile. Well, here's my workers camp. So what? Picture, picture, also. Mm. Mm. So landscape. Got like, landscape work, somehow. Okay, anyway, anyway. So but here, it, it, and, and by the way, this is also another social thing. Eh? And I learned this in Putrajaya when we first, when the first workers camp I worked on. You actually have to be very. You have to understand. It's like United Nations. You have to understand the cultural and the political nuances of the countries that populate this space. By Indonesia, by the way, you never put the people from Madura in the same place with people in Yawu. Mm -hmm. So you have to put them in different blocks. And you know, and, and, and another thing that I didn't, I, I only found out of as well during this thing is, everybody, Indonesians like uh, lehe ayam. You know the neck of the uh, chicken? I had to, we had to break up fights because they were fighting over the chicken's neck. You know, <laughs> you get, can I give you a drumstick? The one drumstick, one the neck. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so, so things that you learn. And again, you know, why I talk about these little stories is people are different. And, 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 and I think it's respect. And, and when you approach everybody with respect and you approach them treating everybody, whether they are a construction worker doing you know, the most menial of work, we treat them with respect, and, and, they tend, and everyone will respond to that. Eh? So a lot of what we want to do now is, is exactly that. You know, they may not think so, but I, you know, this is certainly the intent. And here is a Kampong to Susun. So if you imagine coming from um, essentially um, what shall we say? <coughs> slums into this resort-looking, <laughs> <laughs> I want one of those. <laughs> and, anyway, but you know, but and it's costing the state as well as uh, it's kind of investment quite a bit of money to do this. But you know, if you imagine, as I said, we're coming from slums and into this uh, chalet. Anyway, so this is what we're doing, and just to, just to just to mention sort of the project. Now, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, one of these wonderful things, you know, I, and again, you're, you're probably not old enough to understand the reasons why Malaysia and Singapore has this um, um, sibling rivalry, which I'm just trying to find a very diplomatic way of seeing it. But you know, I mean, we've gone through some hard times, I think, in this in this relationship, and certainly. Um, the older generation perpetuated that, mm -hmm. um, and for good reasons. You know, at the end of the day, it's very hard when you go through a separation, and it's it's really it was it was fairly nasty, lah. Yeah? I mean, it's like 65. I was I was just born after that, so I sort of didn't know about it, but you know, hear all the stories of that. But anyway, so now the warming of the relations is it's important not just for Iskanda, but I think it's important for the country because we cannot afford to go it alone. I mean, we are going to be part of a globalized world. So we are going to be very dependent on making sure that we build relationships, not destroy relationships. Okay? So I think this was an illustration of when you put your mind to it, despite many, many years of, of, of disparate re relationships, you can make it work. But it takes, it takes an, an, a, a, a realization and it takes a commitment to try and make, to want to make it work. And I think our current two prime ministers have that commitment and certainly have that intent. So amongst other things, we've got a joint ministerial committee that looks at activities <coughs> necessary for the two countries with, with regards to Iskandar, and it includes things like immigration, transportation, environment, and tourism. Oh, and I'm supposed to stop talking. Okay, so that was basically the Iskandar story. Uh, it's only a story that's work in progress. Uh, we are just in our third year of implementation. This is a 20, 25 year co uh, completion. Uh, so, uh, you know, I certainly hope that by the time you have your children sit sitting in front of you 20 years down the road in, in, in my, in, in, at this podium talking about it, uh, I would like to think that uh, we've developed something that uh, we are all going to be jointly proud of. And i like to think that this probably will be done in Iskandar instead of in here. And, um, and I think, uh, again, uh, if we all do this jointly and we all are committed to the growth of this nation, uh, which I'm very proud to be a Malaysian. 
I think uh, we can make it happen. Thank you very much. You, know, you, you can do marvelous things, but if the people, you, you cannot do it though. You need to work, you need to convince <coughs> a team to work with you. You need to convince stakeholders that this is the right way to do it. So changing mindsets is, is a challenge. I, you know, I mean, building mega projects is actually not that difficult. After you figure out how to do it, you know, who to, who to make sure, how to make things happen, it's not that difficult. But it's changing the mindset of people. Right? Yeah. So I, I think this is, this is why I, you know, I actually agree to doing things like this, because talking is the best way to communicate your ideas and then hopefully convince people that what you want to do is the right thing. Uh, sorry, your question, your question was what keeps, what's what is your hope and message to us after sharing this your experience? Well, my hope and message to you is very simple. As I said just now, please remember we are all collectively responsible for what happens to us in the future. Right? So, you know, and, and when I say responsibility, it's, 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 it's not just, you know, okay, I must make sure I don't make wrong laws. You know, really. and, and consciously remember that as a, as, as, a, as, as a citizen of this country, we can all make this better. Don't leave it to the leaders. Don't just say it's somebody else's responsibility because I wanted him in as a prime minister and let him do all the hard work. You got to be there as well. Okay? We talk about change. We have to be the proponents of change. Okay? And I, I'm not. Uh, by the way, I'm not in any political party. <laughs> Although I think I joined Amno a long time ago, and then after that, I don't know what happened. <laughs> probably being ostracized because they both paid no, they both uh, But I, I'm not a political person. But as I say, I believe in this country. I believe in the people of this country. You know, with our differences, whether racial or, or religion, I believe we have the makings of what is a wonderful place to live. I'm not talking about great, be the best world, the whole one in the world. No. A place that I think I want to stay. A place where I want to be find my children to grow up and want to stay. And you know, what can I do to make it better? So some of these efforts that I you know that I've been involved with was to try and make it better. One quick question. <laughs> How do you change people's mindset? You force them! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do you change it? You know, I think it's basically making them understand that what you want to do is for their betterment. Okay. You see, change is tough. Because we all get into, uh, you know, okay, for you, I, you know, I, I shouldn't say this to you because you are probably the easiest people to change. Because you're, you're in your 20s, you haven't, you're at the starting of your career, you're still studying. You know, I mean, for you, it's still a long way to go before you get into a habit and you get into habitual attitudes. So it's actually not that difficult. But conversations that uh, such as what we're having now, you know, me telling you what my experiences were and, and you know how I got to it. I know whether it's successful or not, it's not the story. Okay, the story about how to make a change comes from the heart. So I think when you tell that story from your heart yeah, and and convince people that this is at the end of the day, net be plus. You want to do it for their betterment? You can do it. Not easy, but can you? Yes. Hi. Um. My name is Hari. I'm also a graduate from American University. Yeah, well done. <laughs> so um, I have a question. So um, you, I would say that you were growing up. Um, you get um, you should get the first recession. I would say, yeah, late eighties. Um, but how about now? Because right now Malaysia is, uh, I would say, almost at maturing stage. Can we say that? And how about the opportunities for the young people? Because back in 80s, uh, we are developing and then we are building stuff, we are planning for so many things. So there are ample opportunities for young people at that time. But how about now? How do you see young people can grab the opportunities? In what areas that we can grab those opportunities? I, I'll just say this. I think there are more opportunities now for the young people than when I was a young person. Yeah. Still young, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you know, everything from uh, technology to the reach, globalization. You know, what, where, where, twenty years ago we were very limited because you know getting from point A to point B was not easy. Technology wasn't available. You know, now you still the internet. You can be anywhere in the world. Yeah, you don't even have to be there. I mean, not, you know, I mean, even me, I at JB office, we video conference, so that I don't have to be doing the. So, so I, th I think you're actually not limited. You're only limited by your mind. Okay. And, and and I say this sincerely, not because I'm trying to encourage you to think otherwise, but you know, I, I really think that right now you're only limited by your mind. The opportunities today are probably a thousandfold.